You're looking at the UK's first ever direct air capture plant. These fans are turning Sheffield's air into jet fuel. The machine behind me allows us to hoover up vast volumes of air, separate selectively the CO2 that is in that atmosphere, and then reject the atmosphere back to where it came from without the CO2 in it. There's a lot of excitement about direct air capture. Big tech has thrown money at the technology, despite the fact it's not a particularly efficient or cheap way of removing greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. The alternative is capturing it in chimneys where it's emitted, but the team here say this is more practical. If you're deploying on a factory, there's a lot of bespoke integration and essentially design the system every time you need it. So actually it's much harder to deploy than if you just have a shipping container that can be deployed almost anywhere that you have an electricity connection and a water source, which is unique to our technology. What's happening with this container isn't just about sucking carbon down from the atmosphere. Once that carbon's been removed, it's being used to make this sustainable aviation fuel. Flying is one of the hardest modes of transport to decarbonise, but the fuel they're making here could help on that journey. Once we capture the carbon, we can mix it with the hydrogen that's been generated from a sustainable aviation source, and then we can convert it into hydrocarbons or aviation fuel. In terms of the uh, CO2 emission, it is a net zero technology, so this means there's no additional carbon has been added to the atmosphere. Last week, Virgin Atlantic flew a plane from London to New York for the first time using 100% sustainable aviation fuel. But critics say these fuels aren't a silver bullet. What can actually be done to cut emissions from flights from these type of alternative fuels is actually quite small. There's a lot of problems with them, so um, e-fuels, which are made from um, carbon and hydrogen, require an absolutely huge amount of energy that just isn't going to be available to make them in any more than a very small scale. Biofuels would require a huge amount of land that could cause deforestation and even more emissions. While making jet fuel out of thin air might not be the cure-all for aviation emissions, for some it marks an important step towards a lower carbon future. Mickey Carroll, Sky News.